In this demo, we'll walk through a notebook showing how to use Dask, XGBoost, and Rapids. This notebook has been executed ahead of time since several of the, of the data creation and migration steps take a couple of minutes to run. We've included the timings for these steps so you can get a feel for how long they take. And we hope that you see the value of the Rapids ecosystem and how quickly you can iterate on your data and models. We've set up a cluster of nodes using Google Cloud Dataproc. Our cluster consists of one master node and two worker nodes. Each node has four NVIDIA T4 GPUs, each with 16 gigabytes of GPU memory. The first thing that we'll do is load some of our libraries. Several of the core Rapids libraries that we'll be using are QDF, Dask, Dask QDF, and Dask XGBoost. Dask is a library that facilitates distributed computing. Written in Python, it allows one to compose complex workflows using basic Python primitives like integers or strings, as well as larger data structures like those found in NumPy, Pandas, and QDF. Dask operates by creating a cluster composed of a client and multiple workers. The client is responsible for scheduling work, and the workers are responsible for, for actually executing that work. So typically, we set the number of Dask workers equal to the number of computing resources we have available to us. For CPU-based workflows, this might be the number of cores or threads on that particular machine. This allows us to take advantage of all of our computing resources and enjoy the most benefits from parallelization. Since we're using 12 GPUs distributed across three nodes, DAT will specify that Dask should use 12 workers, and we'll set this value later on. So here we create a client and uh, the client will actually create the, the cluster of workers behind the scenes. So we'll use this client to interface with the cluster to schedule and submit work to be executed. In this notebook, there's two types of ways with, uh, for us to work with data. The first is we can use this helper function to load data. Um, so if you have data represent, represented in a CSV file or some other type of data file format, um, you can use or modify this helper function to load your data into this notebook and execute this workflow against your data. Alternatively, um, we can simulate data and we'll use the make classification function from the scikit-learn package to generate uh, features and labels which with we'll use to train our XGBoost algorithm. So here, we'll specify that we'll use 50 million rows and 100 columns for our feature data set. Um, and then our target column will have two classes, um, either a zero or a one. And we'll use the features um, in our XGBoost model to classify um, which one of the target values um, should be a zero or one. We've already gone through and simulated our data set. We uh, saved it out to local disk and loaded it back in um, just for brevity's sake. So we see here that we're working with uh, a data set that has 50 million rows and 101 columns, um, 100 of which we'll use for uh, features and one column that we'll use for, um, for our target column. A traditional data science workflow involves training an algorithm on a set of data and then evaluating that trained algorithm on a data set that has been held out. And this holdout data set is typically called the validation data set. Evaluating the trained algorithm on the validation data set gives us an idea on how well that algorithm will generalize to new data in the wild. So in a way, um, we're actually using the validation data set to validate the algorithm. So here we'll split our data set into an 80% training data set and a 20% validation data set. We'll do a quick check of our dimensions and proportions. We see that in our training data set, specifically for our features, we have 40 million rows and 100 columns. In our target column for our training data set, we have 40 million rows. In our feature data set for our validation data set, we have 10 million rows by 100 columns. And um, for validation, we have 10 million rows in our target column. And the proportions of our train to validation is about 80% to 20%.
At this point, all data currently lives on the master node and is stored in NumPy arrays. So to work with Dask XGBoost, we'll need to do two things. Um, the first is we'll need to distribute our data across our multiple workers. And then two, we'll need to migrate our data from the CPU to the GPU. So to accomplish this, we'll first convert our NumPy arrays to a pandas data frame. Next, we'll use Dask to distrib distribute our pandas data frame um, across the multiple workers. So here we'll use the das.dataframe.fromPandas function to take our pandas data frame and partition it into 12 partitions, one for each one of our workers. After we've distributed our data across the multiple workers, we'll need to migrate our data from the CPU to the GPU. We can use DaskQDF to do this. We'll use the DaskQDF.from Dask data frame function to convert our Dask data frames to DaskQDF data frames. This will migrate the data from the CPU to the GPU. Up until this point, no work has actually taken place. Dask operates by defining graphs. And then once those graphs have been defined, we can use the client to execute that work. So there, there's two ways to do that. The first is we can explicitly use the client to submit the work to the cluster. The second is we can use the persist method um, to tell the client to um, execute that work and, and submit it to the clusters. So after this step, all of our data will be converted from NumPy arrays um, and, and distributed across the um, multiple workers and migrated from the CPU to the GPU in the form of Dask QDF data frames. There's a number of different steps that data scientists take in a traditional data science workflow, um, whether it's defining new features, removing columns, um, one hot encoding categorical variables to a numerical representation, Dask QDF makes all that very easy. We'll assume that our data is ready to be modeled and uh, prepare our parameters for the XGBoost uh, algorithm. So there's three types of parameters that uh, XGBoost can take. There are general parameters, which relate to the booster that we'll be using. Um, so this could be a, a tree model like gradient boosted machines, which XGBoost is, or a random forest model, or even something like a linear model. Once we've chosen our booster, we can specify parameters for that booster. And then lastly, there are learning task parameters that, de that depend on the learning task um, that we're performing. So if we're doing classification, um, we might specify different parameters than um, something like regression. When transitioning from a CPU XGBoost workflow to a distributed Dask XGBoost workflow that is GPU accelerated, there's two parameters that are very important to pay attention to. The first is the tree method. Here, we'll specify that the tree method should be the GPU hist uh, value. This tells the XGBoost algorithm that we should run the histogram method and that we should use the histogram method that is GPU accelerated. The other parameter to pay attention to is the ngpus parameter. Here, we'll specify that that parameter should be 1. That may look a little bit funny since we're using 12 GPUs. However, Dask operates by using one process for each worker. And so we're telling each worker to only use one GPU. The last, uh, the last parameters that we'll set are the learning task parameters. So since we're doing classification, um, we'll want to set our evaluation metric to be AUC, the area under the curve. And we'll want the objective function that we want to optimize to be the binary logistic optimization. With our XGBoost parameters uh, configured, it's now time to train our model. We'll use the dask uh, xgboost.train function, which is very similar to the xgboost.train uh, function. The only difference is that we'll pass in the client and the number of trees or number of boosting rounds um, that we want to take place. Like the dask xgboost 
uh, dot train function, or sorry, like the xgboost dot train function, we'll also pass in our parameters as well as the feature training data set and the uh, target column training data set. Here we see that for a XGBoost model with max depth 12, it takes about 50 seconds to run, which for 40 million rows and 100 columns is very fast. Once we have our trained algorithm, we can use it to generate predictions for the validation data set so we can see how well our algorithm was actually trained. To do this, we'll use the dask xgboost.predict method and we'll pass it the client, the previously trained model, and the feature validation data set. Once we have our predictions, we can compare those to the actual true values of the validation data set to see how well our, our model performed. Here, we see that um, our accuracy on that model was 98.9%, which means that our algorithm was able to cor correctly classify 98.9% .9 of the values in the validation data set. So pretty good. What's great about Rapids is the ability to iterate. So I can go up here and change this from 12 down to six. So our trees won't grow as deep. Um, I can train this model now and viewing the NVIDIA SMI information, we see that we're starting to get some GPU utilization in the range of 80 to 90%. Um, so our algorithm is actually training and we'll be able to, once it's done, um, generate new predictions and um, see how well this new model performs. So we'll go ahead and go through these two steps. Um, and we see that this new model, um, well, let's see what it does. We, we see this new model does not uh, perform as well. Um, it actually drops off by about 0.8 per, percentage points. So um, perhaps a, a, an optimal model might, might have 12, um, might be able to grow up to 12 nodes deep, um, or we can try some other parameters. The, the great thing about this is this trains within 20 seconds to 50 seconds. So it's very easy for me to kind of go through and, and do things like hyperparameter tuning. So in conclusion, Rapids accelerates data scientists and makes it really easy to work with large data sets and iterate quickly. Thank you guys for your time.